Okay, you guys, so almost against my better judgment, um, I had this bike out uh, last Saturday, actually to the Indian Rally here in Connecticut at uh, George Hendy's estate. And so it had about, uh, probably has four hours of riding on it since last week, and I have not done anything to clean it. So I guess you're really not my friends if I can't show you my uh, dirty motorcycle. Uh, so the story on this is it was a an 03, of course it's an 03 Gilroy Chief, bought it from a gentleman in New Hampshire. It was uh, a Chief Deluxe, which was, you know, everybody gets hung up on what model you have. They're all the same darn bike. It matters what your saddlebags are, fender tips, luggage rack, that's what gives the different names. So. I, you know, I have tried to make all my bikes a, a vintage style, which means they all have mud flaps, they have the rear bumper guard, they have the mud flaps, um, the luggage rack, the engine guards or crash bars. Uh, I put front fender rails on all my bikes. So my bikes are all vintages, you know, no matter what they called them at the factory. Um, so there's a, a shot of the front fender rails that you probably noticed on the uh, black Springfield that I showed off in one of our first videos. We have these fender rails, so I have some extras of these fender rails, and I can, uh, you know, attest to the fact that they fit the Gilroy or the Kings Mountain, and actually probably the new modern Chiefs, um, just perfect. Uh, anyway, quick walk around. Rims are powder coated, um, a, a wagon red. Um, it's an ivory color. Uh, the powder coat guy that I use, excuse me, the airbrush guy that I use does this gold and red pinstriping by hand. Um, there is a large feather on the back with the silhouette of what I believe is called uh, the end of the trail. And it shows an Indian warrior sort of slumped, slumped over um, on his horse. Uh, so, you know, feathers go with all of this stuff. He's got some really cool uh, leather and lace and some feathers airbrushed at the top of that. Um, so another one of Joe Malfa's uh, motors, uh, which the rebuild and the honing and porting and performance cam boosts the horsepower and the displacement up a bit uh, from the 100 cubic inch. Um, another one of our uh, brake pedals, which are hopefully in production as we speak. Um, so the Indian scripted cover on the transmission. Uh, again, my bikes have dualies. Um, chrome rocker box covers, lifter tubes, lifter blocks, cam trigger, um, temperature gauge on the oil. By the way, an additive that we use, and on that uh, ride I went on last week, two hours each way, on a hot, hot day, 95 degree temperature, uh, it kept my oil at 170 degrees. It's a product called Lucas, and uh, I got the tip to use it from uh, one of the lead mechanics at SoCal Cycle, Cycle Works in California so many years ago, and so I sort of have that formula. Uh, and uh, anyway, I strongly encourage you to use it. In one of the videos, I will show uh, written down a copy of the formula that I use with the Lucas. However, I do know that 170 degree temperature, uh, oil temperature, engine oil temperature on one of these Power Plus bikes on a 95 degree day is fantastic. Very fantastic. No water cooler, no air cooled thing in the front. Um, so anyway, this is my ivory bike uh, set of gorgeous set of red feathers with uh, gold accents on the front, um, a set of screw-in gas caps with the uh, Indian war bonnet on it. Um, I am lucky enough that I have the large tachometer on all my bikes. Uh, they all have powder-coated large spotlights on the front 
with the uh, Indian airbrushing on them. Actually, the newest thing, which was probably on the black Springfield, is uh, some feathers that are actually draping down the sides. Uh, my Chiefs all have uh, Chief Head mirrors, which were made by Eckcraft, E-C-K Craft, made in USA. Unfortunately, they either went out of business, I'm not sure, but I know they stopped making this mirror. And I was so fortunate to buy a dozen sets of these when I discovered them. Um, airbrushing around the front of the dash that says Chief. Um, I'm going to go around the back side here. I'm half indoors, half out. I hope it doesn't create some awful glare effect. Um, I know the last time I did the bike indoors, and I probably should have done that, but it just didn't work out for today. So I thought pretty interesting, you guys. Let's do the fallaway test. So fallaway test to the right, once again, happened right, right at that four inch area, maybe even a little sooner. And very much like the O2 bike I showed off a few minutes ago, fallaway test to the left, that's not happening. It's hanging in there. Okay. So right at about six inches because of the front brake cable, because of the clutch cable and the two throttle cables. And that's what I meant in the beginning of this video where I said it seems counterintuitive to put all these parts on. And that's what I was explaining to level the bike, level the frame, and then do the fall away test. Because to me, what difference does it make what parts you put on? If they don't weigh the same on the left as they do on the right, you're not going to change them, right? So, you know, the Gilroy technician who did this test in the factory, he knew how to do this with the cables on there. And what I'm self-teaching myself is that the fall away to the right happens right at about four inches, possibly a little sooner. And the fall away to the left happens at right about six inches. And so I'm learning what they learned from doing it in a repetitive fashion. So chrome forward controls, which is common on all of our bikes, including the one we showed off. Um, uh, certainly chrome primary covers, inner and outer, uh, brand new Makuni 42. We're going to be talking about that a lot. You know, everybody's riding the bike with a 13 or 12 year old Makuni carburetor. It's not working the same. Get rid of it. Spend some of your money. They're cheap. They're 300 bucks. And uh, as we go along, my videos will explain uh, what you might want to start with your jetting, your idle jet, um, and the other jets inside there, the main jet, the pilot jet, and uh, I'll get you in the ballpark. You don't need no, dy no stinking Dynatune. You need to adjust your carburetor for where you live, where you ride, and you need to teach yourself to do that. And uh, I'll try my hardest to get you there. I think I'm losing a little bit of how beautiful this bike is to some of the glare that I'm facing here. Um, chrome luggage rack in the back. Uh, one of our leather tool trunks that, uh, you know, I still have these in stock. Uh, this tan leather tool trunk. Um, I don't have any left with the uh, leather uh, Indian on top. However, we still do have some of these that were uh, specifically made for several dealerships in the Gilroy era. Um, airbrushing on the back, which is my favorite logo to put on the back of my bikes. And uh, you'll see that all the bikes I have, um, I, we have these mud flaps also. Uh, throwing this stuff out there to you guys. So these mud flaps are something that uh, we've been using and uh, I have a set of instructions on how to do those. Um, these are not like anything anybody else made. These are about, uh, I want to say a half inch thick, but say I'm exaggerating there, probably three eighths thick. Um, this is actually a King's Mountain seat, which I'm a big fan of, the King's Mountain seat on the Gilroy bike. Um, for those of you who don't know, the Power Plus frame for the Gilroy Chief and also the King's Mountain bike, which was 09, 10, 11, and 12. It's the same frame. 
And the Kings Mountain people and the dealers used to say, oh, no, it's not. They made a change. And that's a, a big pile of BS. Uh, actually, they used the frames, the same jig, uh, to make the frames as they did in Gilroy. It was the Gilroy frame jig to make the Kings Mountain bike. Um, and I know that for a fact. I know who acquired the jig at the Gilroy auction and uh, the trouble that Stephen Julius went through to uh, acquire that jig for the Kings Mountain bikes. Hey, something something new. So we've uh, we have these uh, uh, chrome uh, axle covers, and specifically this set here has a, a gold 14 karat gold Indian nickel inlaid in it. And I have them for both sides. I have them for this side and the other side. I have a small batch of these right now, which I believe are sold out, but. Uh, we're considering doing another batch of these uh, front axle covers. Um, let me slowly come around here, see if we can get this axle cover on this side. There you go. So actually a pair of these things, um, you can either get a gold nickel or the natural, uh, you know, the natural nickel as it would be. And they really are nickels. Um, these front fender rails add a really nice vintage look, classic look to these bikes. Um, so there you have it you guys another one of our chiefs um, my ivory chief um, I have never seen another Gilroy with this color it's actually the Kings Mountain ivory color which I was fortunate enough to acquire the paint paint code for I believe it was a DuPont paint and uh, in my last two restorations you were, were building uh, specifically bike 7 you're gonna see this this wonderful cream color as a second accent on that bike seven. Now I hope the glare isn't turning this into an awful looking uh, mess. If it is, uh, you know, maybe I'll take it off, but for now I'll, I'm gonna install it and uh, if I have to reshoot this indoors, I will. Um, so in closing you guys, so just a minute I'd like to talk about, you know, the misconception that so many uninformed uh, would uh, want to be Indian motorcycle riders have the misconception that these Gilroy Power Plus bikes are junk and as you'll learn by watching my videos they are the farthest thing from junk in fact they're the closest thing to a uh, a, 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 a perfect work of art and so you know the black eye that they got from uh, the flywheel problem and the oil pump problem that developed when they, you know, when they hit the public in, in O2, when they hit the market and they did, started to have these engine problems. Hey, when something's not right on a masterpiece, do you destroy it and do you give up on it or do you fix it? You know? You know what I mean? When, you're, when your dog is misbehaving, you know, when your football team just got it's ass kicked, do you give up or do you work on your strength? Do you make yourself better? So the challenge, certainly to anybody that's over 50, is to acquire one of these and build your own darn Indian motorcycle. Restore it. Get it back to what it was. Um, they say 25 years till something becomes a very desirable classic. Well, we're over halfway there, guys. So, you know, the modern Indian that Polaris is making um, is a wonderful thing, I guess. It's totally different than these bikes, and we'll never see these bikes again. But these cookie-cutter modern Indians are going to be around, and we're going to be overrun by these cookie-cutter Indians. However, you can't acquire a Gilroy Indian from just anywhere. So if you're a would-be, wannabe Indian rider, consider a Gilroy chief. Get the dust off your wrenches and uh, get some moxie and restore one. Hey, you guys, thanks for being with me, and uh, we'll see you on the next video.